Okay, we're going to look at finding curvature, torsion, and tangential and normal components of acceleration for this vector valued function. So let's start with curvature and torsion. Um, we have several formulas for curvature, so um, we'll need to choose one. Um, we really just have two formulas for torsion, the one that the textbook used and then the other one that I gave you that's equivalent to the one the textbook uses. And this one that I gave you is the one I recommend you use because it doesn't require that you learn any new notation or any new processes. So this is all stuff that you already know how to do. Um, so. If I'm going to use this formula for torsion, I might want to choose a formula for curvature that allows me to reuse some of the same calculations. So uh, the formula I'm going to choose for curvature is magnitude of V cross A divided by magnitude of V cubed. Um, now both of these formulas do require that we have a smooth parameterization of the curve, so uh, we might want to think about that a little bit. Um, all of that really relates to the velocity vector, which you'll need to calculate anyway, so let's go ahead and calculate that, and then we'll think a little bit about um, smoothness. Um, so let's see here, we get negative sine t, cosine t, and 2t for our velocity vector. All right, so uh, the key thing about the smoothness of the parameterization of this curve is that this velocity vector should be continuous, and all of these component functions you should recognize from Calc 1 as very easy functions that are continuous everywhere for all values of t. Uh, the other important thing for smoothness is that the velocity vector should be not zero at any particular point. So um, we want just to make sure that not all of the component functions are zero at the same time. And the easiest way to see that for this one is to notice that the sine and cosine functions that we have in the i and j components are never zero for the same input. That's based on the definition of sine and cosine. So we do have a smooth parameterization, so we are okay to use these formulas that we've decided to use here. Okay, now as you calculate uh, these derivatives, all of these derivatives are very easy, and so sometimes students go really fast and make sign errors and leave off a negative sign uh, or take the derivative of a constant and get something that is not uh, zero. Ooh, I almost made a sign error there. All right, the derivative of a negative cosine is positive sine t. Um, so we want to be careful about all that because if I make any mistakes here at the very beginning, it's going to cause me big headaches later. Okay, so I'll need to do a whole bunch of different calculations for my curvature and torsion. Um, several of them involve the cross product V cross A, so I'm going to go ahead and find that first here. And um, I've talked about before, it's important to make sure that your work is labeled so that you can go back and grab it uh, easily and correctly. This is a place where I see a lot of mistakes students make is that they'll just write down the wrong vector here. And it's not that they don't know how to do the problem, but because they make those clerical, clerical errors, then they're not able to demonstrate that they know how to do the problem because they get a big mess and they can't get through the uh, algebra of it. All right, so um, this is another place to be careful. You all know how to do a cross product, but there's some negative signs to be careful about and making sure you write down the correct trig function. I almost wrote down the wrong one there. Um, in the i component, let's see, we'll have 2 cosine t and then minus negative, so plus 2t sine t in the i component. The J component, remember that the minus sign is there. Um, so in the J component, let's see, we'll have negative 2 sine T and then minus negative 2 T cosine T, all with a big minus sign out front. And then in the K component, um, we will have sine squared T plus cosine squared T. And because we're going to use this vector for lots of other calculations, we'll want to go ahead and simplify it as much as possible. And again, I want to label this so that I don't just have a bunch of um, equalses um, so that I can come back and grab this answer later when I need it. All right, so I'm just going to go back to the bracket no notation here. Uh, in the I component, there's not a lot to simplify, but in the J and K components, we have a couple things to simplify. Okay, so in the J component, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this subtraction through. So I'll have positive 2 sine t minus 2t cosine t. 
And then in the k component, I'm going to notice I have that Pythagorean identity, so that all simplifies down to 1. All right, one of the other things I'll need is the magnitude of this vector. And um, because I'm going to be reusing that answer for several things, I will want to go ahead and simplify this. It looks like a big mess at first, and so sometimes students don't even bother to try to simplify it because uh, it looks like it's going to be nasty. But with the sines and cosines and all the squares that are in here, if you expand this out, you'll get several instances of Pythagorean identity, and so you'll be able to get a lot of nice simplifications. And you should recognize that that's likely to happen, and so you should go ahead and do the simplification for this vector, especially if you're going to use that answer for anything else, or for the magnitude of this vector. All right, I guess I don't need a parentheses inside there anymore. I'm going to go ahead and expand out the binomials that are inside the parentheses. So I'll have 4 cosine squared t, and then I'll have an 8 t, 8, 8 t sine t cosine t, and 4 t squared sine squared t. That's all from expanding out that first binomial. And then um, for the second one, I'll have 4 sine squared t, and then I'll get a minus 8t sine t cosine t, and then plus 4t squared cosine squared t, and then plus 1 at the end. I guess I should put parentheses there and there since I don't want to write that square root out. Okay, I have several different simplifications uh, that are going to happen here. I might notice that I have a positive 8t sine t cosine t and a negative 8t sine t cosine t that add up to 1. I'm sorry, they add up to 0. They cancel, so we can cancel those out. What does add up to 1? I've got a couple of Pythagorean identities going on here. Uh, this first one, 4 sine t cosine t, 4 cosine squared t plus 4 sine squared t. Uh, if I notice that those two terms uh, involve the same Pythagorean identity, so pull the 4 out of both of those terms, I'll be left with cosine squared plus sine squared of t inside the parentheses, and um, notice that that's going to simplify to 4. I also have another constant term inside the radical, the 1, that's there, so I'll end up with um, the 4, from the two terms that have the cosine squared t and the sine squared t, and the 1 that can combine to be a constant term. Okay, and then one more pair of terms that involve Pythagorean identity, the 4t squared sine squared t and the 4t squared cosine squared t. Uh, those both involve the same Pythagorean identity, so if I factor 4t squared out of those two terms, um, I will just be left with 4t squared. So magnitude of v cross a that started out looking like a big mess, simplified all the way down to uh, no trig functions left, just 5 plus 4t squared all inside the radical. Okay, 